the United States is experiencing a shortage in Adderall, one of the most popular ADHD stimulant medications. Demand is up. Supply is down. What is a holistic pediatrician to do? Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So there's been a lot of talk in the news. Um, reporters are asking me about it. Some patients are asking me about it. But Adderall, which is an amphetamine salt, one of the types of stimulant medications that used for ADD, is very hard to find. Now, right now, what we are mostly experiencing is a deficiency, a shortage, I should say, in the actual short-acting form. Um, they have both short-acting as well as long-acting or XR, extra extended release forms that are available. But because of this, we are also experiencing shortages in the generic forms, as well as the long-acting forms, as well as other forms of medications are being in short supply as well. Now, there's a lot to discuss here, and there's a couple reasons why it seems to be happening. Now, demand is up. Um, one of the things that we know through, um, through COVID is that educational experiences haven't been as good. So maybe there are more kids who are just struggling right now and needing some help because they hadn't been in school for a period of time. And so they fell behind and are having struggles now. Overall, diagnoses of ADHD are up, including in adult populations. There's been a 15% increase in ADHD diagnoses in adults since the start of the pandemic. Now, of course, also during the pandemic, one of the things that became quite popular was telemedicine, telehealth, and including the use of that for psychiatric treatments, including for ADD. And so it also became a lot easier for people to access doctors in order to prescribe it and therefore to have it prescribed. In addition to that, I'm wondering how much there could be related to long COVID. Now, we know that one of the side effects of COVID disease was brain fog. And we know that in long COVID that there are symptoms that stick around for a long period of time. And brain fog is certainly one of the things that can lead to inattention and a lack of focus. In addition to that, um, I also we have we've also learned that there has been a supply issue as well, and this is because the manufacturers are having problems making it, mostly due to labor shortages. Some of the biggest generic companies in the world um, are having problems keeping up with this as well. So this has become a real big problem, and of course, as you can imagine, there are some people kind of freaking out about this, and of course, not to be light about that because if you or your child is this is the only thing that's working for your kid. It's a sink or swim world. Um, we need our kids to succeed. I've always considered stimulant medications to be part of a holistic answer for some people. Of course, just not the only answer because we know no matter what else is going on with these patients, their underlying root cause issue is not a stimulant medication deficiency. Now, before we go over um, some of my holistic approaches and alternative ways um, of handling um, ADHD in the first place, there are some additional things that I want to talk about in terms of some of the other alternatives. Now, it does seem as if the majority of the, of the shortage of Adderall is specifically in the short-acting version, and this is something that's done usually twice a day. But there are still available the long-acting versions. And so if a person, for instance, was taking Adderall at 5 milligrams twice a day, they may find that an extended release 10 milligram could work for them. Of course, for all of these pharmaceuticals, this is something that has to be done under the um, ordering of a physician. These are controlled substances. Of course, you can't just get them off of um, – you can't get them off the street illegally. That's not the way it should be. We know in college and camp college campuses – that's an issue as well, is that they can get these medicines. But that is one of the possibilities. Um, there are generic versions available as well. And you will see in the show notes down below, I did put in a link for um, a generic website that um, finds um, Adderall and other medications as well. So a person can put their zip code in and they can see if they have it locally. Now, also... Um, you know, there are, sometimes there could be an issue just regarding like maybe you're taking five milligrams and five milligrams not available, but 10 milligrams is. A tablet can be split. In fact, a lot of Adderall products actually have a score down the middle, but using a pill splitter, of course, a 10 milligram tablet, extended release, not included because that you can't just cut open. Those are capsules, actually. But in the tablets, if you can cut a 10 milligram into two fives, then you, that could work in that way. Now, also, um, 
as far as the funny not okay so um besides the adderall itself as an amphetamine there are other amphetamine derived stimulant medications such as vivance for instance and there are others as well um and so that may be helpful and a lot of um Doctors, we do find that it's kind of easier to move within one type of amphetamine or, for that matter, in the Ritalin world, the more more than one form of a methylphenidate that's out there as well and trying to stay within that if it's working. But sometimes there's always the possibility that, you, that a, if a Adderall is not available and amphetamine salt is not available, a methylphenidate, Ritalin, Focalin, there's lots of long-acting, short-acting derivatives of those as well, and those are potentially available, although we are seeing short supplies of those as well because of the demand. In addition to that, there are non-stimulant medications such as guanfacine, which comes in a short-acting 10x, in a long-acting um, intuniv. There's also clonidine, although that's not used as often because it's more sedating. Then there's also a medication called stratera, um, which is a whole other category altogether. Um, those medicines typically take longer to kick in. They're not just that instant act, um, working that the stimulant medications have. That is one of the benefits of a stimulant medication is you do know the very first time that it's taken if it's going to work or not. And that's kind of a nice thing. And you can also, another nice thing about stimulant medications, if needed, is that you don't have to do it every day. You can stop it on weekends, holidays, etc. You can up the dose, down the dose, again, with a, a doctor's guidance. But you can make those types of changes very quickly. And you can't do that with a lot of psych medicines. You can't do that with these alternatives as much. But that is a nice thing about it. Now, um, of course, I'm going to want to talk more about what types of holistic options, integrative options are there instead. Okay. Now, um, one of the things that we employ in our practice, and of course, if anybody's not a part a patient of ours, and we do offer consultations even by video, I also do um, nutritional and um, um, consultations to be able to describe these for people who are outside the state of Florida. But there are certain amino acids that we could use, in particular taurine. A lot of people may have heard about this. This isn't a lot of energy drinks, stimulating. And it can have natural stimulating effects that um, can work similar to a stimulant medication. Another one is L-theanine, which is a derivative of green tea. And there's been double-blinded placebo-controlled studies. Most of them have been done in Asia because there's a lot more green tea consumption there that have shown that compared to placebo, that, um, that L-theanine can improve ADHD symptoms as well. It's a wonderful thing. Um, treatment out there, it's great for anxiety. It's great for lowering blood pressure, better sleep as well. But it has been shown to work for ADD. Now, in addition to that, there are high-dose omega-3 fatty acids. In fact, there are prescription products that are now available approved for ADD that using high-dose omega-3 fatty acids. Quite frankly, I find that usually more milligrams are needed, and there are um, over-the-counter good quality products. Of course, anything that's fish-derived, we want to make sure that it's being molecularly distilled, and we want to make sure that it's being tested in for purities, especially for mercury, since we know that mercury can make its way into fish products and fish themselves. Um, natural form of vitamin A, not the synthetic form that's called vitamin A palmitate, not beta carotene. That's the pre form of, of vitamin A that's found in like um, um, things like carrots and squash and other vegetables like that. But natural form vitamin A that's found in cod liver oil in particular can be very good for things like eye contact and focus. You know, help a lot of people. You, you know, with, when you're using high dose vitamin, and when using vitamin A, you do have to be cautious because no more than 5,000 units per day should really be consumed because too much vitamin A can cause liver problems. So again, working with a knowledgeable healthcare provider who knows these types of things, but cod liver oil can be very helpful as well. Um, there are homeopathic remedies out there. Um, homeopathists themselves can also come up with individualized pro, um, programs, but there are some homeop homeopathy products. The thing about a homeopathy product is it too should pretty much work right away. If it's not working, move on. It's not going to start working. That's not how homeopathics do it. Kind of works on the spot pretty close. Now, also, I found that some of the non um, the hemp derived cannabinoids in particular, things like CBD, very, very helpful. Things like CBG, which often goes well in combination with CBD, that also can be very helpful. Um, also, we have found that sativa strains of THC, um, um, especially those have limonene, myrosine in it, can also have focus. And again, I know so many people are like, wait a minute, you're going to treat somebody with ADHD with with weed, with pot, that's isn't that going to just make it more spacey? Some strains it may, some not. Now, of course, this is not something that I'm doing very much um, in the pediatric population, but in the older population, of course, um, when brains have been more developed, um, it can be very helpful. And I have people who have come off of their stimulant medications using 
um, or sativa um, types of, of cannabinoids that are, um, again, from the, from the flowers or the strains that are more in the sativa realm. Okay, now, of course, one of the things we also want to be talking about is looking for the root cause. Why is a person having these issues in the first place? Again, we mentioned it's not because they have a stimulant medicine deficiency, but there could be other things going on as well. So again, yay, time for me to talk, put in my vitamin D and zinc plugs. They're not just important for the immune system. They're important for moods, for cognitive function as well. Um, so making sure that those numbers are optimized, aiming for the middle part of the ranges like we always talk about. Um, again, um, looking for, there's testing that we can do to look to see if there's omega-3 fatty acid deficiencies. I can do amino acid um, testing of panels. Theanine's not on there, but taurine is. Other things like GABA, glycine threonine, those can be found on amino acid panels as well. And those can have a better a benefits for a cognitive function for brain function as well. Now, of course, one of the important things that we should be talking about is, is the person having a good night's sleep? If you're not sleeping well, if you're waking up a lot, if you're restless, if you're not getting into the restorative REM sleep, then you're not going to be functioning as well during the day. And that can affect anybody's attention. Um, of course, having a healthy diet, minimizing sugars, making sure that there's lots of bioflavonoids in the diet, avoiding hyper, um, higher inflammatory foods, junk foods. The diet can make a difference. For some people, red diets and other diets can be a problem. It's not for everybody, but there could be foods um, that can be issues such as foods that are high in oxalates or foods that are high in salicylates. And again, those are all things that we're able to kind of suss through to different types of testing as well. Um, and so our, our urine organic acid test can talk about some, can um, show whether those issues are there as well. So that could be very helpful. Um, potentially doing an elimination diet where we remove a bunch of the, and the most common um, um, foods that can cause reactions, as well as any food that a person's eating a lot of. Typically things that you crave could be the thing that you're, um, that's setting you off. And we remove them all at a time. And then we bring them back one, um, sequential every three days and see if there's a particular food that triggers. And if it does, then you know that's a problem. You stop it. Then when things settle down, you start going through um, the um, other foods until you figure out what foods are the triggers. Not related to ADD, but that's how I found out that I had corn allergy for all my years. Once I avoided corn, got rid of it, start, found my vitamin D was good. When I got my vitamin D good, that's when that went away anyways. But yes, that can be very helpful. Sometimes doing um, allergy testing. Environments, both inside the house, outside the house, food allergies. Sometimes you'll find that histamines can bring brain fog and problems as well. And of course, if you're stuffy, snotty, you may not be sleeping as well. You may be not able to function and, and concentrate as well in school as well, at work as well. So that's something that could be very helpful. Um, you know, one of the things that we also really want to, of course, focus on is optimizing the microbiome, the gut flora. So much information is talk, talked about regarding the gut brain connection. And so making sure are the good guys there, but also are there any bad guys like candida or parasites, clostridia bacteria there? That's why we like to do our stool testing because we can look for all of those things as well. Okay, and in addition, especially in the southeast and in Florida, molds and mycotoxins. Again, those are things that we can check for in the urine. We can check for immunological reactions to molds as well. Of course, people can be doing testing to see if there's molds in their house. And so that could be something big as well. So there you go. Some of the um, traditional mainstream stuff, a lot of the holistic stuff, but I hope that you have gotten some information out of this. If you do know of anybody who is having issues with the Adderall shortage or just want to learn about alternative approaches to treating ADD, ADHD in the first place, pass this along. And of course, if you aren't already subscribed to our YouTube channel, please do so. Hit the notification button so you know when new programming like this is coming out. And please hit us up on our Patreon. Please become a supportive member of us and hit us up on our our other social media. Have a great day. If you like what you've been seeing, please hit the subscribe button.